back to my channel. Um, this is Tambi here with a, another video. Um, today I want to do an educational video about mermaids. It has been highly requested by my friends and other clients that I work with and I am wanting to give that to you today. I've been procrastinating but I'm br gonna bring it here. I am famous today. Okay, <laughs> silly. Okay, so if you guys know me and you're subscribers and you've been subscribed to my channel since the very beginning, you know how my brain works and um, I write things down so I don't talk for a million hours because I could if I let myself. I know. Shut up. <laughs> I got Miss Commentary back there. <laughs> the giggle monster. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, only a small amount of the ocean has been recorded. So who knows what's out there? New species are being found all over the world. Weird creatures have also been found. I'm a very open-minded person with no limit to reality. Mermaids are known from folklore and legends from all over the world. Different cultures talk about them and their sightings. 500 or 526 years ago, today, Christopher Columbus reported seeing a mermaid. People say that Columbus thought he saw a mermaid, but really what he saw was him describing a manatee. But all in reality, mermaids and manatees do not look alike. Manatees are also thick. Thick. They're big. They're thick. Thick. They're thick like you. Hey. <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> um, but they do not look similar. And what Columbus described sounded nothing like a manatee. There has been current sightings all over the world. Videos, pictures have been taken as most may be fake for views. At least some might be real. But no one really would be able to tell the difference. So with the list of amount of sightings, videos, pictures, the proof that has came out to the world and on social media. Um, you can't really tell in a lot of cases which videos and pictures are real. But I know from the pile that some are real, but no one's going to be able to tell the difference. So people just assume that all of it's fake because a lot of people just have a closed mind. Um, so basically, there are videos that you can tell right off the bat that they're fake just by the stuff that you see on there. But um, yeah, let's move forward. Okay. Huh? Okay. Shut up. <laughs> My belief is there are several different species of mermaids. They are very private beings. Just as we are afraid, they can be too. I'm guessing everyone will know what would happen to one of those beings if one would get caught. My advice is to, if you see one, keep calm and watch from afar. Please do not try to hunt them, catch them. You can hurt them or they can hurt you. Protect yourself. Just as we want to be respected, so do they. Mermaid communities. Okay, there is another thing that I also want to speak about, and I think I'm going to wait for that for the end of the video. I found this article. Um... Don't remember what it's called. I know that's really messed. But um, I did take photos of it. 
to, um, because there's no way I could write all that down in my own words. So I do not own the next words that I'm about to say. I just found this on an article and I thought that it was really cool. Shush your tits. Oh my goodness, young lady. Young later. I'm trying to make sure that I do this in. Uh... Oh my gosh, she's gonna get duct tape my mouth shut. Shut up. Hey, you are gonna duct tape it shut. I will. I know you will. Okay, so this article that I found, um, it talks about mermaids, lost civilizations, Lemira and Atlantis. And um, so I'm gonna read this article. So basically it says, where do mermaids come from? Mermaid legends are told all over the world. We are here, are, we hear of mermaids in Ireland, Scotland, England, Israel, India, Greece, Syria, China, and in Africa. How is it that so many different cultures across the world have their own mermaid legends? How is it that the cultures far away from one another have similar tales of mermaids? Most people believe mermaids are mythical creatures fit for kids' imaginations. Nothing more. But legends come from somewhere. Truth lies behind every legend, including the legends of mermaids and where they come from. A new age concept tells us mermaid origins come from a lost civilizations like Lemura and Atlantis, and so, yeah, I'm going to read more. Mermaids and lost civilizations, Lemuria and Atlantis. There were once civilizations of beings who are much different than modern humans. The beginning, or the beings that lived before us were human-like. However, they had a different, different DNA. Today, we could, we consider these beings extraterrestrial or one of these prehistoric civilizations now called a lost land, was Lemira, a.k.a. Mu, or the motherland. In Lemira, there was beings with the ability to shapeshift. Some Lemurian shapeshifters could breathe underwater. This was the origin of the mermaid legend. In Lucy Cavendish's book, Lost Lands, she explains the ability to breathe underwater is attributed to a hole that was located in the third eye spot. The water was breathed in and out through the hole. Um, Cavendish has past life memories of being a mermaid and Lemira was connected with the land and sea around her. Uh, the fall of Atlantis. This is pretty sad. So, Many people have past live memories of Amira and memories of swimming underwater with dolphins and whales. Some say they could walk right onto land and breathe their air too. So what happened to the mermaids? And the shapeshifters. From the lost civilizations, when Lemira began to collapse, mermaids migrated to Atlantis with extraterrestrials and other shapeshifters. Unfortunately, there was darker beings that tried to mutate the Lemurian mermaid DNA leading to the destruction of Atlantis. Some of the mermaids except, uh, escaped the fall of Atlantis while many perished in the catastrophe along with other beings. If they escaped, um, where did they go? What happened to the mermaids and the mermen? So that is one section of the article. Um, I would love to see how you guys think about that article. And if you would like to read the book, I think that I would really love to read that book too. Um, I will try to put it in the description box below if that would really help you. Okay, so the rest, let's see. Let's see here. So, mermaid origins and migration out of the lost civilizations. The legends of the mermaids 
the creatures all over the world from Asia to Africa, from Europe to North America and beyond. It is possible that the evolution could have gone separate way when we were developing from mere fish, as some theories suggest. Could, could these fish have evolved into mermaids and mermen who still live in the ocean today? Why are there so many legends and sightings if mermaids don't actually exist? If Lemira Atlantis could have existed, who's to say mermaids and shapeshifters didn't reside in these ancient cities along with human beings? This story of ancient times could be true. If the mermaids and shapeshifters left Lemira and Atlantis spread out across the world, this would explain the hundreds of mermaid legends all over the globe. What do you think? Could mermaids and mermen be real? What about the stories of Lemira and Atlantis? Mermaids in Greece. Let's see. So, mermaids in Greece. After the fall of Atlantis, the Lemuritan, the Lemuranians and the Atlanteans refugees started new lives and built new civilizations. One of these civilizations became Greece. This is how the mermaid legends were passed down through the times. One of the Greek mermaid legends tells of the siren. The siren, sirens were mermaids who lured sailors to their death using just their voices. However, in Homer Odyssey, sirens were depicted as bird woman. This indicates that the ability to shapeshift is similar to the Lemurian mermaids. In the other Greek legend, Alexander the Great's sister turned into a mermaid following her untimely death. Mermaids and mermen appear in other tales from ancient Greece, also in other ancient civilizations like Sumeria and Babylon. I really hope I said that right. <laughs> Shush. The ancient Celts Celts and mermaids. The ancient Celts also legends of mermaids and mermaid like creatures. There were stories of marrows and silkies. I really hope I'm saying that right. Fin folk and binvery. These creatures could breathe underwater, but also on land. Depending on the documented or depending on the region, mermaids and mermen could be helpful or downright dangerous. Mermaid sightings have been documented in Europe dating back centuries. My favorite mermaid sighting story was the man who found two mermaid children dying on a cliff by the sea. He took the surviving mermaid home and nursed it back to health. The mermaid child never talked but would eat shellfish and stayed in a tub in the man's home. The man believed the mer children had watched ashore during a sea storm and a few nights prior to. The man was a good soul and returned the mermaid back to its home in the sea. This story was published in a local newspaper in the 1800s. Selkies, a different mermaid story, is the story of the Selkie. The Selkie, ah, that sounds really bad. I really hope I'm saying it right. Is thought to be a shapeshifter, one who can change from this from a seal to a man or a woman when on land. This legend is often compared to the swan maiden, the frog prince. Men and women would fall hopelessly in love with the silks because they were gorgeous in their human form. There are even tales of men marrying silky women only to have their hearts broken when the silky woman leaves and returns to the sea, never to be seen again. One of the legends says a woman can cry seven tears into the sea to call up a silky man for love. Some say the story of the silky was created by lonely sailors on long voyages away from home. They could see a seal and mistake it for a lovely woman perched on a rock or a seashore. Um, let's see. So that is basically that article on there. And I think that it's really cool and it's also um like kind of like a summary of that 
book about that woman's past life in Atlantis and uh, Luminarians. I think I said that right. Um, and so if you want to check that out, please do. I will try to put it in the description box below. Um, the author and let me get to the rest of the video. So if you're really interested in mermaids and you're just so attracted to mermaids, and I don't just mean like romantically, I mean you want to be a mermaid, you believe you are a mermaid, I believe you. So a lot of people are, they have this energy surrounding them where they are just very connected to water, the ocean, mermaids in general, and um, there are communities for that. Um, there are people just like you, if that is you, and if you would like me, if you would like to hear more about the mermaid communities, um, just keep on watching. So there are mermaid communities, a lot of them are in places where there is an ocean, but that isn't always the case. There are places where there are mermaid communities where they get together at lakes and different places. Um, there does not have to be an ocean there, but um, a lot prefer it. So basically, mermaid communities are basically people who believe that they are mermaids or they're just very connected to the mermaid energy or they are mermaids. And they get together with their mermaid friends and they there are sometimes mermaid community events where uh, they meet at a beach or a pool or an event and they bring their tails. There are uh, basically professional tails made. Um, and they look really realistic and really cool. Um, I mean, you can get cheaper ones, but they don't look as realistic. But the older, or not older, sorry, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, but the more expensive ones are going to look more realistic to uh, what you would look for if you wanted to join the mermaid community. You can be a lone wolf. You can do it by yourself. You don't have to join anyone. You can use mermaid magic on your own. Um, some mermaid communities, um, there are different types. So, and I don't know if all of them advertise what they do or not, but some believe in mermaid magic. Some just believe in just wearing the tail and just having fun with their friends. Um, so that is something that would be really cool to enjoy. Um, let's see. There is a way, um, well, I mean, there are certain jobs where you can use your mermaid side. So, like, I don't know if they do it at SeaWorld or not, but I know there's a lot of aquariums and a lot of uh, party places that are hiring for professional mermaids. I will tell you, though, that mermaids, uh, to be hired as a mermaid, you need to be go through mermaid training which um, I don't know how difficult it is, but I know during the mermaid training, they might teach you to hold your breath underwater for long periods of time. They will teach you how to eat and drink underwater and uh, do things underwater. So that's gonna be a cool thing. Um, a lot of the mermaid uh, jobs are oriented towards children, uh, but I don't think all of them are, but just, recommendation if you wanted to be a professional mermaid and actually get paid for it and I actually looked it up like they pay pretty good uh, to hire mermaids so yeah uh, I think that would also be a fun experience if that is something that you want um, there is a website that I think might help a lot of people who are inspired to be a professional mermaid or 
whatever, and it's called aquamermaid.com. And maybe that might be able to help you become a mermaid for work. Um, a lot of these jobs require training. Obviously, I said that. Um, if you like this video, uh, just please let me know. And if you want to hear more, uh, I am very much willing to do this. Um, yeah, I had fun making this video. If you would like to see more, I would be willing. Um, all right, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.